coming. Hi. I am so sorry, but I'm just wrapping up an email. Do you mind if I just take like a minute to, to finish typing this out? Thank you. And please have a seat. Take any, any of the chairs. But uh, full disclosure, that one is the comfiest. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, the cushion and the swivels. But thank you. I'll just be a second. Yeah, um, it's been an exceptionally busy day thus far. Well, yes, actually, um, as rudimentary as it might seem, the procedure basically begins and ends with, uh, they take this in your class, and they cut it into three parts, and then they uh, apportion um, the, you know, one segment to each of the three on-site counselors, myself being one, and... Uh, We'll get better introduced in a second here, but sorry, this is vice principal, so I wanted to make sure this goes out. Yes, yeah, all that today. And, um, uh, yeah, we hope to be sort of as efficient as possible with these pullouts, and interfering with class time at all. Or, okay. And, okay, I'm all yours. Thank you so much for your patience. It's good to meet you. I'm Counselor Pepe. Thank you for coming in. Do you mind if I just confirm your first and last name? Yeah, we're, we're very regimented with, you know, what time we can spend on which students, so I just want to make sure that, yeah. Yeah, okay. Let me just check that. You said, okay. Yeah, all right, cool. You're in the right spot. Um, yeah, thank you so much for being on time. Yeah, that already puts you a cut above. I know, it's a, seniors have a funny way of uh, taking the longest route through the hallway to get here. Especially uh, in the second semester here, but you know, I guess that's just a symptom of what they call senioritis. But in any case, uh, you seem to be uh, sufficiently inoculated, so <laughs> yeah, thanks for, thanks for taking the time. But uh, what class are you getting out of, if you don't mind me asking? Uh oh. I guess really you should be thanking me then, huh? I shouldn't assume, maybe you'd... No, you... Yeah, okay. Yeah, I do have a good instinct for that sort of thing. What students like and dislike, but uh, that is not generally a popular subject. So, well, I'm glad I could uh, afford you a... And I'll be a brief rest, but... Yeah. So, um, that being said, we do have to get to work. Um, we don't have a tremendous amount of time, but uh, let's try to make the most of it. Um... Oh yeah, and also, this being, uh, I know the subject matter, um, college, careers, life after May 16th, which, you know, it may not seem like it right now, but I assure you does in fact go on. Um, I know it can prompt some students to feel a little tense, but uh, I want to try to assuage any fears and just be a font of resources as, as much as I can, so any questions that you have, I hope to be able to field and, and or not field, answer. I've never super been sure what people mean when they say that they're fielding questions, but uh, in any case, just to be clear, I would like to answer your questions and not dismiss them, okay? Okay, sweet. Sorry, I'm burning our time right here. Uh, let me give you the spiel. So, do you know why you're here? Right, okay. Nothing gets past you. So, the, uh, the school board has uh, deemed it valuable as a method of... Uh, leveling the playing field and creating more um, equitable access to the resources, uh, the invaluable resources of, of counseling, um, that every student at the public high school is entitled to at least one free session of college and career counseling with one of the three accredited counselors. I myself being the best one. No, I'm just, I'm just one. Pardon me. Um, that being said, I do mention that you were entitled to at least one free session of counseling. And that is to say that this first one, as you know, is mandatory because, uh, well, you know, the, the, the principal and the school board have dictated it so, but if you would like to have follow-up sessions, those are also entirely free. They, should, they come at no cost to you or your family, okay? And we can schedule that with any sort of frequency that you want leading up to the end of the year. Yeah. Okay, sweet. So, um, it being the time of year that it is, and we fully understand that, uh, quite a few students will have already made 
uh, progress, either writing applications, sending applications, or even receiving acceptances, or um, what's the noun form of decline? Declinations, I suppose. I shouldn't be so flippant about this. Um, so I would like to get out of the way now, just because it'll be very clarifying to me. Uh, have you already been accepted to uh, a four-year university or a college uh, or any sort of a two-year program through an early action or, or an uh, early decision application? Okay. Have you been waitlisted? Okay. Let me just get that down here. No, no, not at all. Yeah. I, let me tell you, just by you showing up to this meeting today and talking to me, that means that you are on pace, you know? The, the people who have done early action, early decision, these are these are folks usually with a lot of uh, family pressure coming from them. They're, they're looking to get things, or, you know, they, they just have sort of an anxious disposition, perhaps, and they're just trying to get it out of the way. And that being said, um, you can think of me as sort of a, the pace bike, like in a marathon, or, um, yeah. So anybody past me is ahead of the pace, but if you were you're with me right now, which you are, you know, that's what you're doing here, then you are on track, okay? You're, you're on the right pace, yeah. Okay. So, you've not yet been accepted, and, I mean, just broadly speaking, have you been thinking about any, that, well, I should ask this at first, would you like to go to pursue higher education at a college uh, or a university? Is that a part of your plan? Okay. Yeah. No, that, that resonates. Uh, it just sort of seems like the done thing, doesn't it? Yeah, but you know, it's not necessarily right for everybody, and that's, that's no shame, you know? I mean, God, I feel like nowadays in the media environment that you kids are growing up in, sorry, I shouldn't say kids, students, um, I feel like, at least on my social media feed, and this is funny because this is coming from someone who works as a college counselor, so it must be interpreting my search data in a very interesting way, but, um, I get told by these influencers that, like, you know, college is a waste of money every damn day, um, and that, you know, here's, if you were really smart, you'd be doing this, this, and this to improve your employability, and none of it involves getting a bachelor's degree anymore, but, look, I don't think that you should take the advice of these trendy, sort of flash-in-the-pan DIY lifestyle influencers, right? There is, um, there is concrete and, and real value in a degree from a university. And in my personal opinion, so little of that has to do with increases in increasing your chances of employability. Yeah, that's just my personal perspective. But I mean, you know, the uh, atmosphere of colleges and what they intend to provide you varies dramatically from place to place, from program to program. Yeah. What I'm hearing, if, if this is correct, and stop me if I'm wrong, is that you, you do want to go to college. You're maybe not super sure uh, what it is you want to study. Does that sound accurate? That is so fine. Yeah, that is so okay. So it is not, or I should say, um, it is no longer really the fashion that uh, one must declare their major before or either during an application process to a four-year university or college, I should say, um, it is much more common now that you wait two years of sort of exploratory education and then you take um, time during your junior year or the end of your sophomore year uh, and, and declare that. Yeah, once you've had, exactly, once you have time to shop around. Yeah, that is much more in fashion these days, so you shouldn't worry about not being certain about what you want to do. So I think a good place to get started here would be combination of things. I gotta learn a little bit about you. Um, and unfortunately, and I hate to do this because it's always the most dreaded part of every meeting, but I'm gonna have a look at your transcript, if that's okay. Okay. I'm just gonna pull it up here, okay. Do you have... Okay, I was gonna say, that's a funny coincidence. Yeah. So you, got, you, have a, you have two siblings, two siblings in, at high school with you. I see, see, so okay, sophomore and a freshman, but you're the oldest then. Wow, 
Yeah, that's, well, I have an older sibling myself, but uh, so I, I guess I don't really understand the experience, but, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have to circle back to that at a certain point once we discover sort of where we want to send you, because there's, there's some fun trends that can be drawn with them, with sim between them, like what, what uh, sibling you are in a group of uh, siblings, like what number sibling, um, and I'm so sorry also if you can hear this. Um, the vice principal's secretary just had her baby, which, you know, congratulations, but it's been a little bit uh, louder in the office uh, as of late, as a consequence. Uh, in any case, sorry. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just getting lost. I have your transcript. Here we go. Okay. Well, it looks like there was nothing to be afraid of, really. Yeah. Okay, this, yeah, this is impressive. I don't, I really mean that. I'm, is, there, is there somebody in your life telling you that these aren't good grades? Because these are good grades. No, I hear you. Yeah, I mean, when my folks uh, saw my transcripts, I mean, it, it was almost like I couldn't possibly have done well enough to please them. Does that feel resonant? Yeah. Yeah, okay. No, okay, but the good news is that from an objective basis, you have a really strong foundation here. I'm seeing that you've got A's and B's in basically every subject across, you know, areas of study. Uh, and you got sports on here. That's good. Now, let me ask you, are sports something that you are interested in uh, continuing in a collegiate setting? Okay. Okay. I hear you. So not necessarily, you know, hanging your hat on it so far as applying for athletic scholarships or anything of that end, but, uh, yeah, intramurally, certainly. Well, that makes perfect sense. Okay. So... Let me ask you here, because I'm sure, and here you can see the screen, right? So, it, we have your your best performing um, courses here, and I'm wondering if these two areas of study are sort of what you're looking to continue pursuing in a, in a collegiate setting. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, let me say this, that if you're in this, a position of uncertainty, um, it can always be good to, yeah, begin your academic career in pursuing something that you're already good at, right? And then you have plenty of time to change stream, yeah, in the process if you discover that, you know, one thing or another isn't working out. So, here's your transcripts. I should ask, have you taken the, uh, SAT? Okay. Let's go to here. Might I ask what you scored on the SAT? Okay. That's great. No, that's that's perfect. We're, we're building out a, a very, um, how should I say, a very strong foundation here. Um, have you taken the ACT? Okay. Well, covering all your bases, and uh, no, that's good. We encourage that. But uh, uh, what did you score on the ACT. Okay, so in that case, we're going to take your highest score of those attempts. Do you remember what that was? Okay. Sweet. All right. Oh, yeah. I mean, that is true. That um, a number of sort of the quote-unquote top universities, which is a term I hate, but, you know, we'll get back to that. Um, they are no longer uh, requiring you submit scores from the SAT or the ACT, but uh, that being said, it never hurts. Like, it literally never hurts to have them. Um, to that end, have you taken uh, any SAT subject tests? Okay, that's fine, actually, but you should, uh, you should look into them. They're totally not a necessity, but, I mean, frankly, with the grades, with the scores that you received in, um, you know, across the board on, on your transcript, uh, it would be relatively easy uh, as a thing to just sort of bolster your uh, your qualifications. Yeah, it, it really just, um, it, you know, it, it codifies your, 
your mastery of certain subjects. You know, it, it says like, I can do and I will do well in this area of study. Uh, and SAT subject tests are just like, you know, like garnish on an already, you know, very strong transcripts. Okay. So we got your academics, we got your standardized tests. Um, so now we need to sort of talk more about you and uh, the person you are, you know, the full person you are that isn't encompassed in these transcripts. So, uh, you know, we got a sense of that with your athletics, but um, beyond that, do you participate in any clubs on campus? Okay. Okay. That's interesting. And do you hold a position of leadership in that club? And how long have you held that position? You're saying you've held it for th for three years? So you said you were... Oh! Well, you should have said that at the top, yeah. So this, you know, puts a whole different spin on things. Not only are you in a club, but you founded, or co-founded, I should say, a club. And you've chaired it for three years. I mean, this is the sort of thing we have to consider, like, we're talking like we're building a resume, you know, you, you never did a job. It's like you you um, facilitated compound tasks with ease and aplomb. I don't know. Yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> okay, any other clubs? Oh, sweet. Yeah. Well, that doesn't matter. No. <laughs> you, you can go to one meeting and <laughs> I would still put it on. That's just how things are done. How the game is played, as they say. Okay. Um, art, arts extracurriculars. Um, I see that you perform in the band. Is that correct? Uh, do you do um, marching band before school? You did for okay a semester or two. Yeah, that's fun. Still counts. <laughs> Still counts for me. Okay. And, um, what was I going to say here? Where'd you go? Okay. And, uh, you got your, you got two clubs. Sorry, I'm totally scattered. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a day. Um, oh, yes. Okay. Community service. Yeah. Do you have, uh, you know, let's be broad here. That this sort of conversation can have a somewhat, you know, nefarious spin to it because it's like we're trying to fabricate, you know, we're trying to spin things into community service that may not have been community service. But I would argue, okay, I would argue that a lot of us that are just, you know, good, rounded model citizens end up engaging in community service that we would not necessarily consider as such, okay? So, you know, like if you've ever tutored, um, tutored children like at the library. You know, if you've ever been a part of that program, you ever volunteered in a food kitchen, if you've ever, you know, done anything that broadly is for the betterment of the community without being paid or having some uh, academic credit, you know, yeah, out of the goodness of your own heart, as it were, or, you know, literally just out of a sense of, like, this is the right thing to do and I should do it. So do you have anything that strikes you in that respect as a, yeah, yeah, give it a second, think about it, I'm sure you'll come up with something. That counts. That totally counts. Hey, you know what? You would not believe the things that I've managed to spin into sounding like community service today. This is not <laughs> a stretch by any means. You, you have done. Yeah, I mean, you have actually done community service. So, you know, no fabrication necessary. I shouldn't say fabrication. No. Hmm. Elaboration, extemper, and you know, I'm, I'm out of the words today. I'm not really in the verbal space, but but no, that counts great. Let me get that in there. Okay. Well, I mean, I I I shouldn't say this because.
because I should never play favorites, but this is one of the stronger, uh, the stronger, how should I say, profiles that I've seen today. No, I mean that. I'm, I'm being entirely honest here. Yeah, I think that you, and, you know, and we'll talk about this, but you should have reasonable expectations, but you should not shy away from, from uh, applying yourself to top schools, I should say. Yeah. No, you got the, you got the stuff, you know, you get the goods. Um, can I ask you just a broad sort of, um, this is not necessarily demographic, but it helps for us to know a little bit about your familial context. So can I ask, um, your parents, uh, do you live with your parents? And, um, do you have a father and mother, two fathers, two mothers? Okay. And, um, did uh, both your parents go to college? Okay. I'll get that down. And where did they go, if you remember? Okay. Oh, okay, sweet. You know, that's always fun to sort of put together. It's like, you know, because they both went to a local school, now you live here, and now you go here, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's fun to see how many people's parents met in school. Um, so, you know, it, it, we'll get more into this later, but it bears uh, asking, do you uh, have any interest in going there? No? Okay, big N, O. <laughs> Just cross that out. You do not need to explain to me why you don't want to stay close to home for college. Believe me, I know. <laughs> no, yeah, I, um, I skipped to the other coast. Yeah, I got the heck away out of Dodge, as it were. I, I, I blew that lemonade stand. Um, but, you know, here I am. So, life is long and, and fascinating and unpredictable, so you never know where you're going to end up. Um, apropos to uh, discussion of your parents, have you filled out your FAFSA? Okay, so you're going to want to do that ASAP, um, and I can forward you the link to that form on your email, okay, your school email, would that be good? Okay, so look out for, uh, for an email from the, uh, the counseling department. Um, so what the FAFSA is, is uh, federal financial aid. So that is to say that the federal government um, you know, has interest in, uh, you know, for a better educated society, for more people pursuing secondary education. So um, they will provide contingent on uh, need. Um, and I, I believe FAFSA is only need-based. Um, some financial aid uh, if you end up uh, going to college and uh, need help paying tuition. So... What's nice is, it's a sort of a nice perk is, uh, you know, not a ton of people know this, but the FAFSA has very recently um, become considerably easier to fill out. Yeah. So it used to be 108 questions. And it was like you know, the length of an AP test or something, but um, it is now only 36 questions, you know, to incentivize, to incentivize rather broader usage. Yeah. Yeah. So it can be a bit of an awkward... Um, conversation to have with your parents, but it is, like, so worthwhile. Like, you need to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you should just sit down with both of them. Does, does that sound doable? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would just get them, like, at dinner. I know that might seem rude to, like, have technology out at dinner. Some families have rules about that, but, like, they, you know, this is... They're invested in your future. They love you. They're your parents. They'll, they'll set the time aside. Um, so you gotta fill out your fabs out. FAFSA, I should say. Um, yeah, and that, that's pretty much all you need to, well, I shouldn't say that, because when you do start applying and you do start filling in applications, um, institution by institution, they will often have their own, um, uh, you know, informational field about um, your parents' uh, income, um, because a lot of institutions have their own trusts that uh, apportion merit-based scholarships and need-based scholarships, so. Also, I should say this too. Um, 
we want to be realistic about your financial situation and colleges that you uh, can more easily afford and less easily afford, and that should be uh, factored in when, when we start considering institutions. That being said, it is my sole responsibility to see that you attend the college that you most want to go to, and if that means doing a little bit of magic math to make the financial situation work between, you know, the school, and because we issue merit-based scholarships as well, um, you know, the high school does that, the colleges can and do, um, I mean, you've got pretty good athletic performance, and, you know, you could always, you, you never have to go on to necessarily play the sport, even if you get an athletic scholarship, that is all to say, you know, we can find a way to get you into the school of your dreams, yeah, yeah, don't, don't let cost be the, uh, inhibiting factor, right, okay, so, we have, a we have a sense of who you are, um, still a little iffy on, on what you want to study, but, so let's talk a little bit about what you want from a school insofar as atmosphere and vibe, as it were, you know, um, one thing that not a lot of people, you know, are, and they will consider it, but sometimes a little too late in the game, in my opinion, is what a campus feels like, you know, what sort of an environment it's in, also where in the world is the college, because it's not just a school, it's also a home, and it's where you're going to live for four years, and you're going to like living there, you know, yeah, you don't want to end up somewhere where you're like, oh, this sucks, I mean, I like the school, I like what I'm learning, but I don't want to go outside every day because I don't like that it's 150 degrees outside or it's 2 degrees outside, you know? If you went to McGill or something, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, in any case, do you know, roughly speaking, if there is a part of um, the world or a part of the country that you are interested in attending a university within? Okay, after my own heart. Yeah. I, I definitely agree. So that sort of answers my next question. That, um, it seems like you do have a sense of the size of school that you would be most interested in. Okay. So, there's some really quick and easy tangible benefits of a small campus. Reduced class size, right? So a better ratio of faculty to students. Always uh, preferential, in my opinion, because, um, well, fewer students means more attention. And if you're anything like me, you love attention. <laughs> um, but that is just, uh, that, that, you know, the, the benefits of a large campus shouldn't be ignored. Um, and I only say this because it's my job to, to let you know. But large class sizes can lead to, uh, or large campuses rather, can lead to more independence. Um, they also have more robust student scenes, as well as sort of overarching student activities and a sense of school spirit that is oftentimes not fostered at a small school. You will also have, at a bigger school, access to more resources, more facilities, and uh, oftentimes just more robust departments. There can also, be, I mean, I say this because you're a student who's coming from, relatively speaking, a large high school. There can sometimes be a feeling of, um, yeah, I don't want to say pettiness, but certainly an, an increased emphasis on interpersonal dynamics, even intersecting with your educational experience at a small school. That is to say that you will be more subject to the whims and the attitudes and the uh, personalities of your faculty when there are fewer faculty on campus. But that all being said, okay, and you're still wanting to go to a small school. I totally agree, and I totally resonate with that. It's like, you can picture yourself at a small school. Does that sound accurate? Okay. I think you should take some time to, just as a visualization exercise, try to picture yourself at a big school, and see, see if you like them, you know? I used to do this when I was applying for college, because, you know, it's funny, I applied to a couple big schools really early on, and then I ended up going to a really small school, so. When it came down to it, it was like, I could see, I could visualize the version of me that attended all these respective institutions, and I just, I kind of went with the one that I liked the best. So, now, difficulty with smaller schools um, is that they can be more selective. 
So, are you familiar with the concept uh, of basically subdividing your uh, academic institutions of interest into uh, safety schools, goal schools, and reach schools? Sounds that familiar? Okay, cool. So, um, it, it's a bit of a flawed conceptualization, but it is... I think a more bisected approach is maybe a little more, um, a little more kind. It's like, I think that you should apply to schools that you have good odds of getting into, and I think you should apply to schools that you would love to go to, right? And those Venn diagrams can overlap, but you also shouldn't be afraid to apply to schools that you love to go to just because they are selective, okay? Because as I've said, you have a good transcript, but it is my job make sure that you have realistic expectations um, and what that ultimately comes down to is casting a wide net okay does that make sense so yeah I mean it's like playing the odds and acceptance rates vary dramatically so some schools are just safer bets than others just how it goes so we want to make sure that when you're applying to schools your list or your portfolio as it were um, contains a good balance of schools that you are more likely to get into just based on the numbers, and schools that you love and would love to go to, okay? Those both need to be present. And, you know, don't skimp out on one in preference of the other. You don't need to be a realist right now. You're applying for college. It is inherently a little bit crazy, right? It's bold. Right? It's a bold thing to do, so be bold. It's going to make you stand out. Okay, have you started any applications? You, you take it a look. Can I ask what institution you've... Yeah. Okay. Just, you can just tell me. Okay. Mm. Very nice. Okay. Is that all? Right, that, no, that's a good amount. Certainly. Okay. That you've hit your own methodology in choosing these selections, but I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what I think is the most important to add, or the most important features to look for when you're perusing the marketplace of uh, higher education. So, first I'm going to tell you what not to look for. Do not Google best schools at blank subject. Okay? Is that why some of these are on here? Okay. Fair enough, but doesn't mean they're bad. All I mean to say is that sometimes those articles are bought and paid for by universities trying to promote themselves. Also, there is no use for any sort of objective standard when it comes to measuring what is essentially going to be an experiential experience for four years of your life, you know? That's going to vary subject to, you know, any number of personal factors. So the most important thing to consider when, uh, at this stage, um, I think our faculty, alumni, current students. So, what you need to get a sense of is who used to go there? You know, who went there that inspires you? Who's cool? Uh, you know, what have they made? And you think to yourself, whoa, where did they learn to make that? Well, it might have been there. So read about, you know, interesting people in the field, you know, in all the fields that you want to pursue, and uh, see where they went to school, you know? Or go the other way around to see prominent alumni. All of these page, or all of these uh, these schools on their websites will have a prominent alumni page. That's really important to look at. In addition to that, I want you to start reading about faculty members. And you know, if you want to go above and beyond, you can read some published work of faculty members. But at a bare minimum, you know, look at a headshot, read a bio, see what they're see what they've done, see what they're interested in, and get a sense of who they are. Who who's teaching here? Who are they hiring? What are they teaching? You know. What personality do they bring, but also what expertise, what specific expertise that you can't get anywhere else in the world? Now, okay, now the third thing is current students. Now, current students are not nearly as hard to track down as you'd think. So, did you have any friends that, I assume, you know, you have friends in other years that might have graduated a year or two ago, right? Right, well, they have friends too, okay? It's a big school. Uh, you know, just looking at this list here, I know we have myriad alumni that have attended um, actually every one of these institutions. So 
I can give you names. Yeah, certainly. No, I, I can I can send you uh, at least school contact information for a number of people that have attended these universities. And, I mean, spring break's coming up. A lot of people are going to be home for a little while. So you can, you know, even uh, if not in person, you can get on the phone. You can schedule a Zoom call. And you have to talk to them about what it's like to live there as a student day to day, right? That's the most important thing. What is the practical experience of attending that university? So, the one last thing that we have to talk about, because um, I see we're running out of time here, but uh, let's talk about the Common Application. Okay? You familiar with the Common Application? Okay, so the Common App is probably the most, or the essay, therefore, I should say, is probably the most time consuming part of the contemporary college application process. So, I'm going to ask personal favor set up your account with the common app tonight i know but please just do it tonight and get it out of the way and look at the prompt okay and then start brainstorming what could i write this essay about you have a very robust um i keep running out of words for this but that you do a lot of stuff all right i'll keep it simple you do a lot of things. I am almost certain that you have a rich and interesting inner life. I mean, you could be a robot, but you fooled me so far. So, you know, Turing complete. Look, when it comes to what you write your, your application, your common application essay about, there's a lot of talk that, you know, it helps tremendously to have, I don't know, like a, like a story or like a, a struggle story that you can you know, in a, in a crass turn of phrase that you can kind of commodify and use to your advantage. But look, that's an incredibly cynical perspective. Because the hard fact is that the people who have those stories have lived the lives to back them up. You know what I mean? And that makes them interesting people and appealing to universities that want to attract interesting people. So the most important thing to do when you're writing your common application is to be honest about who you are. Right? And I can tell you just by talking to you for a half an hour, you are interesting enough to go to any of these schools. I'm serious. So, okay, action items. Create your account for the Common App. Um, your list of uh, colleges is good. I think that we could add like a couple more safeties and a couple more reaches. Yeah, just to, you know, create a, a broader base on which to, uh, to build your Build your castle. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. Um, what else was there? Talk to your parents about the FAFSA. Yeah. I'll email you the form. Fill it out as soon as possible. Okay? And then, not necessary, but uh, you can start uh, looking into AP, or sorry, pardon me, uh, SAT subject tests. But again, you don't need an SAT subject test. Your transcript speaks for itself. And then uh, finally, um, you know, Keep your grades up. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not your dad, but <laughs> yeah, keep doing good work. And, uh, and don't be, don't be stupid. <laughs> don't, don't screw it all up for, uh, you know, for drugs and alcohol or whatever. Because let me tell you, looking at your list of schools, there's going to be plenty of that to look forward to once you get into college. Okay. Right now you gotta, you gotta be on your grind. <laughs> but, uh, not for too much longer. Do you have any questions? Do you feel helped? Okay, good. <laughs> I hope. Let me ask you this. Are you feeling like you could use another one of these sessions to follow up? Okay. That, yeah, that's totally fine. Um, how does next week work at the same time? Yeah, I can get you at a glance for this. But probably only a couple times. Okay. Okay, does that work? Okay, I'll send an email to your bird, uh, your teacher, rather. And, uh, make sure they know. Okay, so, if we're going to have a follow-up, I'm going to insist that you get those first few action items done for me, okay? Does that sound okay? Sound fair? Yeah, in return, I will get you into college. <laughs> I'll cheat, lie, and steal. Alright. You got, like, 15 minutes before... 
Yeah, it's Experian. I mean, I bet if you scream down the road, you could make it to In-N-Out Burger and back. Okay, get out of here. Have a good day. I'll see you next week. It's good to meet you. Yeah. Somebody's getting suspended.